Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Code Wars Code Katas episode 48, I think it is, yeah, for episode 48. Um, if you're new to the show, you can visit github.com slash codinggarden slash code dash katas. Uh, all of the katas we've solved in previous episodes are here. All the katas we solved tonight will be here as well. Uh, and if you have suggestions for katas for me to solve, you can submit them as an issue here. Uh, now today, we are going to focus probably on like six and five Q problems, maybe four Q, and those are like intermediate level problems. What about your code review? I think I think tonight is an okay night to do that. I, I want to solve at least one kata before I get into that, but yeah, if you want to redeem that, Andrew, why not? <laughs> um, and if you're new to Code Wars, you can go to uh, codewars.com and uh, sign up and they have many different user submitted coding challenges that you can choose from. Uh, you can use many different languages. I typically like to use uh, JavaScript um, and they range in difficulty. 8Q is the easiest, 1Q is the hardest. And like I mentioned, today we're gonna be in the 654Q zone. <laughs> Let's say hello to everyone. <laughs> um, yes, hello, hello, hello. Here's the thing. I think my chat manager has all the highs and hellos um, from this morning as well. Like if we keep scrolling, yeah, like eight hours ago, that's, that's too far back. <laughs> Hello, Sean, welcome to the stream. And Samuel and Andrew and Ipsies and Cold Sun and Umheck, welcome, welcome. And Mustafa and the Greg, the real Greg. <laughs> and hello, Gazija and David and Pixa. Hello, I am lonely. Well, hopefully, Pixa, we can provide you some company tonight and you won't feel so lonely. <laughs> uh, good to see you twice in one day too, Zach. Uh, Jayton says, I've been watching Modern Warfare. It's good to watch some coding and learn for the future awaits. Nice, nice. And hello, Oscar and Ikrish. Uh, Brandon says, I thoroughly enjoyed the stream this morning. Well, thank you very much. Um, I tried my best. <laughs> I think everything being bleeding edge resulted in what it, what resulted in. I should definitely re revisit things in about a month when all of the libraries have had a chance to update themselves and align themselves with version one of Dino. But yeah, yeah, I need to fix that. There's a lot of things I need to fix, but I was already late, so I just went ahead and started. <laughs> Hello, Harrison and Shine's love. What's up? And Cold Sun and Andrew and, and, and another Andrew. Uh, welcome, Sai. Hopefully, you'll enjoy your first time here. <laughs> I will ask for a de design review. I'm not a designer though. Like I can give you my opinions, but there are people that are much better qualified. John finally understands inheritance in, in Java. Great job, John. Can we get some emotes in the chat for John? And what's up, Doc? Hello, infected node. And Jay, get at you. And <laughs> what's up, Murdoch? Um, though, so mine is a regular expression. Yours is just a sentence with pipes. <laughs> oh, I should look look for Vohio too, huh? Vohio. Oh no, it's not gonna show up. It's not gonna show up because um, I replaced the e the emotes with the actual image. So yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> I thought we're, I was doing a, D a Dino part two. Nope, this is our, our normal code kata's time. Yeah, this morning was an extra stream. Okay, Andrew, if you remind me after we finish the first kata, if you remind me, we will do your code review. And also just uh, have in mind Something focused that you'd like me to look at. Would you like me to look at something to be refactored? Would you like my opinion on certain things? Um, just try to keep that in mind. I think Dino will be great, though, once it's had some time to mature. Exactly, yeah. So the security by default is awesome. Um, the idea that it's very similar to how things will work in the browser, I say will, they do work that way, but a lot of people just use build tools like Webpack instead of just direct imports in the browser, but yeah. <laughs> refunded his points it doesn't count <laughs> help you port it to typescript i could we could do like one thing we could type one thing that could be fun um i totally forgot what you learned what was it oh inheritance ah yeah so recursion is more of like a functional concept that isn't exactly like object-oriented programming so that's okay hello bob welcome welcome um okay so there are no six cues in the suggestions right now so i think we're gonna pick one so usually what I like to do is I sort by most completed because these are user submitted. So some of them may have uh, not the best description, problem description. So I go by most completed. Um, I go by, no, no, approved. Um, and then all katas I have not trained on. So I'm gonna see things that I have never seen before. And hello, Elmo and Andrew, what's up? <laughs> Live share session? Yeah, I'd be up for that. 
Uh, and then we're gonna filter by 6Q. And we're gonna look at this one. This already sounds hard and mathy. <laughs> rectangle to squares, yeah. The drawing below gives an idea of how to cut a given true rectangle into squares. A true rectangle meaning that the two dimensions are different. Can you translate this drawing into an algorithm? Probably, I don't know if I want to, but we'll <laughs> put it on the list. <laughs> And hey, J-Towns, so a kata is just a specific coding challenge, a coding problem, you could say. Hello, Slims. Welcome. Math. Um, so um, like this one is basically you're given the dimensions of a rectangle and your function needs to, like you're given the length and the width, and your function needs to return um, the number of squares that can be created in their dimensions. That's one type of thing. Golden ratio. Yeah, I guess that might have something. Uh, reverse or rotate. Let's look at this one. The input is a string of digits. Cut the string into chunks. Uh, did my message not send or did my chat not show it? I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> I can look. <laughs> um, well, I'm not gonna be able to see it because I didn't actually didn't have the Twitch chat open. So there's the Twitch chat if you want to send it again. <clears throat> okay, the input is a string. Uh, cut the string into chunks. Hello, Sophia, welcome. A chunk here is a substring of the initial string of size, SC. Ignore the last chunk if its size is less than SC. If a chunk represents an integer such as the sum of the cubes of the digits is divisible by two. Hello, OG, welcome. Uh, reverse that chunk. Otherwise, rotate it to the left by one. This is... I mean, it's not hard. It's just convoluted. Why do, like, why, I, don't, I don't know if I want to solve this. Okay, so we're given this. Our chunk size is 6. So we say, like, take that chunk size of 6. Um, if a chunk represents an integer such that the sum of the cubes of its digits is divisible by 2. So we have to find the sum of the cubes of the digits. Um, and <laughs> if that's the case, then we reverse it. Otherwise, we rotate it to the left. Weird. Okay, let's look at another one. This should be an 8Q. Hey, <laughs> it looks hard to me. <laughs> and hello, Dylan. Welcome, welcome. Uh, sent it. Can I use big int? Um, I don't know. I think it's usually node version 8, so I don't know if it's supported in that. And good morning, Bolloman. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay, help the bookseller. Hey, how'd you do that project mayhem? <laughs> You just embedded an image. <laughs> or, oh no, uh, did you actually? Yeah, I totally forgot. People can unlock emotes now. That's a thing. Nice. Great work. Solve fizzbuzz in one line. I could do that. I could do that in my sleep. All right. Um, if you add string 1, 2 to string 1, 3, it will be 1, 2, 1, 3, or 25. If you add two strings together, it's going to concat concatenate them like that, unless you cast them to numbers. Um, okay. Uh, we might do coding game in a bit after I finish one. I got to find a kata that we're going to uh, uh, try to solve. A bookseller has lots of books classified in 26 categories labeled A, B, through Z. Each book has a code has a code C of three, four, or five more capital letters. The first letter of a code is the capital letter of the book category. In the bookseller stock list, each code C is followed by a space by a positive integer N, which indicates the quantity of books of this code in stock. Okay. Oh, yeah, so if it allows node 10, we could use big int, yeah. So, for example, an extract of one of these stock lists would be this. So we have all these books, okay, or an array, right? You will be given a stock list and a list of categories and capital letters. And your task is to find all of the books L with codes belonging to each category of M and to sum their quantity according to each category. Whew. Why? <laughs> Why are these so weird? All right, Pascal's Triangle. Uh, I'm set on doing a 6Q for sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to do a 7Q. We did a whole lot of 8 and 7Qs last time, and thank you, Corrupt Signal, for that follow. All right, Pascal's triangle. Write a function that, given a depth in, returns a single dimensional array or list representing Pascal's triangle from the first to the nth level. For example, if you pass in 4, uh, level 1, level 2, Two level three level four I guess I have to I have to look up the algorithm I have tried exorcism it's it's pretty fun I like that it's test driven um, all right one more buying a car we're gonna vote something easy I don't know Pascal's triangle so I'd have to learn about that to be able to do it 
All right, let us begin with an example. A man has a rather old car being worth $2,000. He saw a secondhand car being worth $8,000. He wants to keep his old car until he can buy the secondhand one. He thinks he can save $1,000 each month. Okay, I don't want to read that, but we're going to put it on the list. So <laughs> we're going to do a poll about which one we should do. Um, compound interest. Is that what it is? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do a straw poll, mainly because, I mean, okay, <laughs> let me know in the chat right now. Should I do a Twitch poll in the chat, or should I do a straw poll? What do you think? Oh, and Dino is out. That's cool. Twitch poll. Twitch. Twitch. Okay. Whoa, they have a new website. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Type one if you want to. We'll do a Twitch poll. <laughs> Everybody wants a Twitch poll. All right, which kata should I do? And this is a, a seven, no, it's a six Q. Which six Q kata should I do? Um, so we have buying a car. We have uh, Pascal's triangle. We have help the bookseller. I don't think I'm gonna use your bookmark, Andrew. <laughs> Um, I can use, um, did I, did I type Q wrong? Six Q. Uh, help the bookseller. Um, reverse or rotate. <laughs> Rick rolls. Yes. Yes. Rick rolls. Uh, rectangles in two squares. All right, um, you can, wait. This will be a three minute poll and you can spend a thousand seedlings to add an extra vote. Here we go. Did I spell it wrong? I might've spelled something wrong. <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. Vote now, vote now. What is D Del Dot Dog? Twitch Prime sub! Thank you so much, Wally Oxen! Welcome! I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you in the chat. Or maybe I only saw you on YouTube. And I uh, thank you for that follow, Dylan. How to vote. Uh, if you're on mobile, can anyone help Pixa out? Are you on mobile? Because otherwise, I think you do like slash vote followed by the index. Oh, on Twitch the whole time. Okay. It, my memory was jogged. But thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Much appreciated. And no worries, we're all we've all been we've all been busy. Uh, fetch the Code Wars API, split it, and then prompt with the slug. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Um, the thing is, I don't like showing my bookmarks bar. And when you copy and paste things, um, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, it looks like Pascal's Triangle is won by a long shot. I need your opinion on this web API. Uh, I mean, that is just the HTML element API. You can take a look. It's showing normal, okay. How should I fix my sleeping routine in this pandemic? I don't know, because I have a really bad sleeping routine too. <laughs> um, so actually, do I have it running right now? No, I don't have it, but um, I use a tool called Flux. I think most operating systems have just have it built in now, but uh, Go to, if you look for flux, just get flux. Uh, this removes blue light on your screen. And so that's one way uh, to stop yourself from staying up all night because your, your body sees uh, blue light and then it thinks it's daytime and it wants to stay up. So if you use a tool like flux, which basically removes blue light from your screen, um, that can help you from having, from like look, staring at a computer screen all day. Uh, also, um, iOS and Android both support it natively to be able to uh, set your 
uh, it's called like night mode or something like that. Yeah, Windows 10 is called night light. So that helps remove blue light. That will, if you're looking at screens all day, that's going to prevent you from staying up because of that blue light. So that's one thing I do. Um, try not to drink any sugar or caffeine <laughs> near, near bedtime. Um, a nice herbal tea is always nice near bedtime as well. Pascal's Triangle won, and Murdoch contributed 2,000 channel points. Nice. Nice. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so Pascal's Triangle 1. So now I have to learn what Pascal's Triangle is. I don't have a problem with caffeine. I have a problem without caffeine. What's up, given to Meow? Welcome, welcome. Blue light makes me sleepy. Interesting, interesting. What's up, Major, Game Geek? Ma Major Gamer Geek? It shouldn't be too hard of an algorithm. Yeah, I'm not scared. I ain't scared. <laughs> um, and what's up, Leet Rose? Welcome. Similar ID to sleep hygiene, never use any phones or screens in your bedroom. That could be, uh, yeah, so it's a way to train your brain to be like, yeah, when I'm in this space, I'm not going to see anything that's distracting or any screen or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, nothing much here. We're just solving, solving some katas. Um, I'm going to pull this down locally. I'm going to make a directory called episode 48. Open this up with VS Code. Are those the Primogen uh, emotes? Is that what that one is? I've never seen that one. Um, okay. If I don't have YouTube, then I can't sleep. I know some people that um, you uh, listen to, what's, what's it called? Um, I forget what it's even called, but <laughs> there are certain things that can help you go to sleep. That's the one, ASMR. <laughs> Uh, ASMR, yeah, yeah. White, or white noise, yeah. Actually, I like to sleep with white noise. I always have a fan on. Um, it helps drown out all the extra weird noises that can happen in the night. Keeps me, keeps me asleep. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, code pin. Alka. Code Wars API. Cool. Alka made this really cool code pin where you can put in a Code Wars slug, and it, or put in an ID, and it'll give you back the info. So that is what I want to name my file. Hour-long art restoration. Interesting. So I'm going to create a file called Pascal's Triangle.js. All right. And then uh, we're going to bring the code down locally. Uh, and if anybody else wants to try this while I am attempting it, you are more than welcome. And um, once you have a solution, feel free to let me know. And we can take a look at your solution as well. Uh, and also, um, I cannot choose Node version 10. But if you don't like JavaScript, you can choose from any one of these languages as well if you want to try solving it with that. Cool. So I'm going to bring the function down. There it is. I'm going to bring down these tests. Uh, yes, I can link that code pin. It basically just hits the, uh, the Twitch API. I have a fan on nearly all the time. It helps me keep me relapse, relaxed. Also, I can't sleep without one on. Yeah, I, I only ever fall asleep without one on if um, I'm like really, really tired. But otherwise, I kind of need it. Um, OK, so usually what I like to do is I, I bring bring the code down locally and then just turn these into console logs so we can just run it in our editor. Um, and then um, we start up this cool, super cool thing called Quaka. Do I have a Quaka command? Can someone do exclamation mark Quaka? <laughs> When I take a tamper monkey script, uh, there, there are none on my nightstand. <laughs> there were a ton down here, but I cleaned up. I'm trying to keep my area pretty clean. Do I have a Quaka command? I guess not. But uh, check out Quaka.js. It's really cool. It lets you run your code inside of uh, your editor. They support several different kinds of editors. But, and thank you, Cryptos, for that follow. Uh, you can see right now my function is returning undefined, and we're expecting it to return uh, these different things. Um, I'm just going to put these on a new line so we can see the returns. Um, OK. So Pascal's triangle of 1 returns an array or an array with just 1. That seems easy enough. <laughs> but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look up the Pascal's Triangle algorithm. Also, I'm also going to read the, the problem description in more in depth to try and understand what I what do I even need to do here. 
OG Jake says, I fell asleep watching Vape Juice Jordan complain about what GraphQL broke with their update yesterday. Sounds about right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's look at the problem description. I think if I go here, yeah, so I can look at it bigger. So, write a function that given a depth in returns a single dimensional array or list representing Pascal's triangle from the first to the nth level. Oh, this, this, uh, now that I see the animation, this actually looks really easy. So like level one triangle is just that. Level two triangle is that. Level three triangle is that. Level four, level five. And it's using the previous values uh, to get that. I see it. Yeah, that's awesome. It's easy. Easy. <laughs> All right, let's look it up on Wikipedia. Um, it's kind of like, I mean, kind of like Fibonacci in that each level depends on the previous level. Do not see the algorithm. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this, the first and last element will always be one in each level. Easy enough. Cool. The entry in the nth row in the kth column is denoted nk. For example, the unique non-zero entry in the topmost row is zero, zero. So that's n and k are zero, zero. Yeah, I'll, I'll write, um, okay. Yeah, let's do this. So without looking up the official algorithm... And based on this animation, can I figure it out? Because it's, yeah, it's the sum of the two parents right above it, right? That's easy, huh? Easy. Easy. <laughs> um, and then each row has length i plus 1, so I know how many to calculate. And then I just need a way of retrieving the previous row's items. Each row as a single number. All right, let's figure it out. So... Um, well, actually, is it really that easy? Four, six, four. Like, is it possible to calculate the values in a row just based on its row number, not based on the previous row? I'm just trying to think, so I don't want to just like start writing code. I definitely want to write out like, what is my solution going to be? Recursion. <laughs> um, so yes, like if I look, so this is row, CM Griffin with the raid. Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what were you working on CM, CM Griffin? And welcome Raiders. Uh, we are just getting started. I'm, I'm going to attempt to implement Pascal's triangle, um, which I have never, never heard of before this, but Basically, it's a triangle where each item has some relation to the previous row. And given a row number, we need to produce the entire triangle up to that row number. And thank you, uh, Thursday48, for that uh, host as well. And everyone should check out CM Griffin. Click that link. Drop a follow. He's also a member. Oh, he's not. He's not a member of our Life Coders team, but he should be. <laughs> but he's a great dude, and uh, you should follow him. Um, Zarius, thank you for that follow. It's in choose K, where in is the spot in the row and K is the row. <laughs> I don't like all this math talk. Oh, okay. Uh, host party. Oh, yeah. So still working on host party. Cool. Having issues spinning up the internal express server in production build mode. Dang. That's super interesting, though. So you have a an Electron app that has an express server running inside of it. I've always wanted to do that. It makes sense in a lot of cases. Uh, this is a 6Q. I'll go ahead and link to it if you want to try it. How do you know everything, Doc? You can calculate any position using in choose K, but it's going to be less efficient for generating the whole triangle. All right. And thank you, Tech Johnson, for that follow. I don't know if I thanked you for that. Um, here's my... So I have this theory that Doc is actually me 50 years in the future. <laughs> no, that's, that's probably not. It's probably not the case. <laughs> I, I, I know that's not true, Doc. I'm sorry. It, it diminishes your, your brilliance. And a good morning, Hello Chicken. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Um, let, 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 me, let me just figure this out. So if we, 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 we will need to... Um, so we're given a number, right? And that's the number of rows, right? So we need to iterate up to the number of rows, right? And we need um, a place to store 
the um, place to store the triangle. Uh, like, honestly, honestly, I could do this as an array of arrays. And then it's really easy to reach into, uh, like, a previous array. Yeah, so a place to store uh, the triangle. Now, the thing is, if I do an array of arrays, so I could do an array of arrays and then just flatten it when I'm done. But to me, the way I'm thinking right now, indexing into the array of arrays is going to be a lot easier, potentially, than attempting to figure out how to reach into the, into the array. Combination formula doesn't work. Your test will be timed out. Really efficient algorithm, I know. Okay. <laughs> So that's that's the thing I have to be careful of. If I'm literally calculating every single row and I'm using an array of arrays, I could time out. But how big do the numbers get? I don't know. Let me solve it for the simplest cases, though. Like my, my current test cases, I only have to go up to level six. I'll solve it for this. Then we'll, we'll optimize it. So a place to store the triangle. This is an array. We iterate uh, from one up to and including the number of rows. Um, we then, so each row has the length of its level, right? So if a triangle of one, row one has length one, row two has length two. Okay, so um, this particular row that we're on, when we're iterating up to the number of rows, uh, we need to iterate from 1 up to i, because that's the number of columns in this particular row in the triangle. We probably could use recursion. <laughs> let, let me... I can memoize the combination formula using the fact that n choose k equals n minus 1 choose k minus 1 plus n minus 1 k c. But then you're just calculating Pascal's triangle in another way. Yeah. Here's the thing. I know, I know, I know we could, we could look up the algorithms. We could do it the mathy way, but if I at least solve it this way, I will be happy with myself. And then we're probably going to have to change it and optimize it to use some algorithms and such. And, um, thank you, Amy Johnson, Maddie D and, uh, Kringer for those follows to understand recursion. You must first, first understand recursion. Exactly. Every way is the mathy way. Well, I've, I've w watch me, watch me. Well, thank you, Mr. Lunatic. And <laughs> thanks for that follow. Okay, iterate from 1 up to i, because that's going to be each item in the, um, in, in, the, in the particular row that we're on. So if I, well, if, let's call this j, because we have a, a nested iterator, and, and already, this is like a n times n complexity. This is bad. But let's, let's do this. I don't even know a single thing on coding, but I'm enjoying this thing. Well, thank you, Kringer. <laughs> um, okay, so iterate from 1 up to i, we're going to call this j. And we're calling this iterator i. And uh, if j is 0 or i, then push 1, because we're on the edges. We're on the edges of that particular row. We're just going to push 1. Um, else, we're going to, and it really, if, it, if it's greater than, um, What's the rule of thumb for understanding math? I've not yet figured it out yet. I don't think there is a rule of thumb. It's it's uh, there are a lot of formulas and stuff. Two plus <laughs> two plus two is four minus one. That's three. Quick maths. Should I give a hint? No, not yet. Not yet. Watch me struggle. It's fun to watch me struggle. Um, okay. So for the given column, we're going to reach into. Okay. Um, if it's zero or one. Or the or zero or the end of the array, we just push one. Otherwise, we need to um, else get the previous row value at j minus one. Get the previous row value at j plus one, right? Because this one is j minus one. This is j plus one. Add them together and push, right? Because then when we get here, it becomes pr the previous row at j minus 1 is 1. The previous row at j plus 1 is, or no, at j, not j plus 1, at j. Um, add it together, push it in. This is my algorithm. It's fun to watch me struggle, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I think like in uh, this is the algorithm. Is it performant? Probably not, but I think we can at least solve it up up to Pascal's triangle of six. Um, so let's go. So a place to store the triangle. We're gonna say uh, let triangle equal an array. Um, then actually inside of here we're gonna create an array for the row. Think of each row as a single number. Three, four, five. Yeah. I'm not stretching. I should be stretching. <laughs> um, regardless, like I mean, does anybody see anything wrong? I mean, uh, not, 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 not the fact that this is not performant. But does anyone see anything wrong in my logic here? Like, have I logic through the idea of generating Pascal's triangle? Uh, push one into row. Into row. Um, and then push row into triangle. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> You're making it so much harder for yourself. <laughs> okay. But is it right? There's only one way to find out. We'll just code it. So uh, we need to go from one up to the number of rows. I spelled it. <laughs> I probably spelled a lot of things wrong, but that's okay. They're just comments. It's not actual code. Yeah, and so for anybody wa that is watching that doesn't know about code, basically what I've done is I've written out in human words um, how I'm going to solve this problem. And now I'm going to take these human words and turn it into actual code. A good trick for doing this way would be to pretend there's an imaginary zero at both ends of the array. Interesting. Watch me. Watch me. <laughs> I got this. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have my triangle. That's going to be an array. And then we're going to iterate from one up to the number of rows. So I'm going to do a for loop. It goes i equals one, while i is less than or equal to n, i plus plus. Great. And now all of this um, goes into the for loop and we implement it. So we need to create an array for the row. So uh, I'll say row equals uh, a new array. And really, we can go ahead and just say triangle dot push that particular row. OK. Um, no, I like what you're doing. I don't want to see none of that combina combinatoric stuff. <laughs> Let row. Actually, for both, for both of these, I can technically use const because I'm not changing the assignment of the row. Uh, I'm just changing the values inside of the reference type, which is a little weird, but that's fine. OK, so now we go, uh, we, we, we're going to iterate for uh, let j equals um, 0. No, no. Iterate from 1 up to i. No, from 0. While j is less than i. And actually, I'm going to do this. Hello, Bogus. Welcome. <laughs> Um, well, j is less than i, j plus plus. I guess less than or equal to, because when i is 0, j will be 0. Hmm. This is where we'll use 1. <laughs> this, yeah, this is where we need to use 1. Okay. So now we have this nested loop. Um, and here we go. So if J, and thank you, uh, are you you for the follow? And also Sasman, uh, I realize Ru, this is probably, it's, it's a pain to watch me try and solve this thing without the maths. Um, yeah, what format am I getting the input? It's literally just in. So the input is what is the level of Pascal's triangle I need to generate? Yeah, single input, which is the number of rows. Okay, so if j is 0 or i, so if j is uh, 1 or i, so if j is equal to 1 or j is equal to i, so if we're on the ends, if we're on the ends of a given row, we're just going to say uh, row.push 
one. Um, and then at the end of this all, we need we need to <laughs> I gotta write an algorithm to flatten the array. But for now, <laughs> I'm going to return uh, the triangle. So in the simplest case. It's broken. <laughs> in the simplest case, I can't even get a triangle with one in it. Okay. Um, I guess this would be... Javascript, does JavaScript... Oh, oh, but we're in node version 8. Node version A 8, I don't think, has flatten. But you're absolutely right. It, uh, there was the whole um, smoosh debacle. Array.prototype.flat... And that should be easy enough because I only have a depth of one. Um, can we see the smoosh? Can we see the Node.js compatibility? Oh well. Or if not, I can I can write my own function. It'll be fine. Not the number of rows, the nth row. Um, oh. We'll start this at one. Less than or equal to n. Yeah, it, it wants all of the elements in the result. Okay, so <laughs> in in the simplest case of uh, depth one, I'm done. All I got to do is flatten the array. In the simplest case of depth two, done. All I got to do is flatten the array. In the case of four, we now got to get a little more tricky. We now have to uh, solve this else statement. So I'm on the right track. Uh, node 11, it was on the right of the uh, table. And hello, Alka, how, how you doing? Um, oh, no JS. Yeah, so it only exists in 11, so we can't use flatten. But I can write my own. Um, else. Get the previous row value at j minus 1. So. Prev. Left. <laughs> is going to be um, the triangle at uh, the current row, which is j minus one, because we're doing one index, uh, minus two, because it's it's zero indexed, I think. Um, so that gets the previous row, and then we want to get, oh no, no, sorry, sorry, this is gonna be i, i minus two, and then the previous row column is going to be j minus two as well, because we're doing zero index. Isn't this weird? <laughs> and then previous right will be at I. This it's in the same row, but the column is now um, minus one instead. Add them together and push them into the row. So say row dot push previous left plus previous right. Okay. I think I've done it. <laughs> I think I've done it. <laughs> I at least got it for four. Uh, let's go ahead and write a, um, let's write a flatten. Um, yeah, I got it there. So it's one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one. Yeah, so it works for four. Uh, and then for six, it should end with 10, 10, 5, 1. 10, 10, 5, 1. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. I'm looking at some of the solutions. I understand none of it. <laughs> he has the answer done up below him. <laughs> what do you mean, batters? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I, I've, I've, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Now we have an array of an arrays that we need to turn into a single array, which is actually not that hard to do. Uh, don't tell me the algorithm just yet. Here's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to, first we need to flatten this array. Um, and then um, I need to submit it and see if my solution times out. Because if it doesn't time out, I like my solution. <laughs> I like the fact that we didn't use any combinatorics. Uh, combinatorics. Um, so uh, we have we actually want to return uh, triangle dot reduce. Uh, we're gonna have each uh, value. And thank you, Flylet, for that follow. Um, this is gonna be all, and this is going to be a row. And we want to return uh, all dot concat with the row. And we're going to reduce it to an array. There we go. Done. Ta-da! <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> okay. Um, and I, 
could create like a comparison. Let me let me write a comparison function that uh, stringifies the arrays because they're reference types. But let's see. Um, compare log. Array one, array two. Um, log if array one dot two string is equal to array two dot two string. Okay. So now, so this gives us true, 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 true. I could use double equals. It's okay. It's just a string. Um, so this works. Here's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> I am going to, um, I'm going to run it. And then we're going to see, um, does it time out? So it works for the basic test. It's just a string. We can use double equals. <laughs> Look at that, 10 milliseconds. Uh, <laughs> let's get to me, ship it. Oh yeah, so let's talk about, because uh, I, I did this flatten like super, super quick. Um, so basically what this does is it's a reduce over a single array. Thank you, iKrish, cool. <laughs> so well, we, we're taking an array. This is our resulting value. And we're basically trying to turn an array of arrays into a single array. So um, this is a, a um, an arrow function that is going to get the resulting array. So it starts off as the empty array. And it's going to get each row in the triangle that we created. Uh, <laughs> good job. Now listen to chat and write it in a factorial way so it can time out. <laughs> Yeah, so th this is this is a nested function. Like we technically could have written it like this as well. Uh, we could have done uh, function, but the thing about the function keyword is it doesn't have an implicit return. So I would have had to do something like this. There you go. This, this is the same solution. Um, but arrow functions are nice because if they're only a single line, then they automatically return their result. Um, okay. Now I'm I'm ready to listen to your maths. <laughs> if you want to if you want to try to tell me um, how to um, do this with maths, I'm open to it. And thank you, Mr. Wormhole, for that follow. He's <laughs> I cut my own hair. I cut my own hair. <laughs> Rocky at the top of the steps. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So that's just like the function keyword. Make it run twice as fast by only going up to i divided by two. Wait, why? <laughs> how, how does that work? I only go up to i divided by 2 and then I can calculate the rest? Is that what you're saying? Algorithm. Each row is just a power of 11. <laughs> Wait, 11 squared is 121? Oh my goodness! That's actually, that's that's awesome. I want to solve it that way. Uh, but yeah, is that the case? 11 raised to the power of 2. Oh, watch me, watch me. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> uh, so we have a function. Um, oh, wait, I missed a bunch of chats. I'll catch up. The rows are symmetrical. Powers of 11 takes longer. <laughs> True, but okay. But I'm going to do it with powers of 11. That actually sounds really simple. So Pascal's triangle with uh, in... Um, and then we need, watch me, watch me. <laughs> um, can I do it in a single line? Yeah. So when we return, um, no, I kind of, I need a loop. Wait, no, no, I can do this. I can do this. Let's call this length. And then uh, we get an array, and we say we want that to be from the length. And then for each item, um, we have i, which is the current row, and that's our power. So 0, 1, 2, etc. So I could just say uh, math.pow of um, 11 and i, two string. And then um, split it. 
Yeah, I could use the exponentiation operator. Does the exponentiation operator in um, exist in node 11? JavaScript doesn't like exponentiation. We can try it. Uh, okay, so right now, I'm going to change these back to console logs. Yeah, so the only thing we need to do now is um, we need to turn these strings into arrays of numbers. But that does it. So I guess I technically don't have to two-string it. trying to think <laughs> map.number. Yeah, I'm trying to think how I can uh, do this all in one go. So instead of two stringing it, so that's just going to give us an array of all the powers of 11. And then we can reduce that very similar to how we did, did it before. So we have all of them and then we have the row and we want uh, all.concat um, row dot two string. So turn the number into a string spread it into an array and start it off all like that. Um, what am I missing? Oh, weird semicolon, abort mission. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's done it, except it's strings instead of numbers. Um, I mean, and then I could just map it. <laughs> I could just map them all to numbers. This is, rid this is ridiculous. Don't ever do this. This is bad. This is very bad code. Um, well, then I want to turn them all into numbers. And it's wrong. No, it works. <laughs> thank you, uh, McKinsey. Uh, thank you, Infected Node, for that hydrate. No, we've done it. Look. We've done it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, true, true. True, 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 true. It's genius. So it's powers of 11. We then take that turn it into an array of a bunch of string numbers and then convert <laughs> and convert those strings into numbers. Um, okay. Okay, just I wanna, in case I want to see uh, it with recursion. Yeah, let's take a look. I'm open to it. No! <laughs> yeah. Ah. Okay, so this is in, uh, is this Python? What about 11 raised to the fifth? I think that works. Oh, no, you're right. You're right, Infective Node. It breaks. It breaks for that case. Yeah, this doesn't work. Hmm. So it's powers of 11 up to a point. Yep, Infected Node told us. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll just leave a note. This only works up to length four. So one, five, ten, ten, five, one would be the actual row, but then the power of 11 would give one, six, one, zero, five, one. So you have to account for the carrying over. Oh, okay. But let's look at the, um, wait, this isn't Ruby, is it? Is it? Sorry. Oh, this isn't Python. This is, yeah, this is Ruby. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> This isn't I, thought, I said Python initially, but this is Ruby. So uh, here's the recursive solution. When, when we want the um, nth triangle. Um, if n is less than 1, we just return row of 1. Great. Otherwise, uh, stick fake zeros on the ends of the array and take each pair of consecutive elements and math them to their sums. So we can say um, fake zeros. OK, so we, we have 0 and 0. And then we do the recursive solution of n minus 1. And for each value, uh, what does this 2 do here? Oh, each pair of consecutive elements. So every two elements you add together and then map them together. Ah, so we, we basically take this array and turn it into an array of length divided by 2 because we've grouped it together. And now this map is the actual length of the row. Is that accurate? Ru, 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 ru. <laughs> what should I call you? Ru? I'll call you Ru. Hide my bananas. <laughs> and thank you, a thief, for that follow. Okay.
Very cool. Yeah, this does not exist in JavaScript. Um, and then do it seven times. Yeah, so, but the thing is, you're calculating the nth row. We need the entire triangle. So you, you'd have to modify this solution to calculate the entire triangle in one go. But I actually like it. I think I'm going to try to implement this in JavaScript. Should I? Yeah. It's great. I really like it. And Doc hasn't said any. Are you mad at me, Doc? <laughs> are, you, are you mad at me that, that I didn't use maths? <laughs> um, we can try to implement your combine a twerk solution. I don't know how it would work, though. Nah, move on. All right, we'll move on. I'm proud. I'm proud of the fact that I figured it out without maths. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to submit. I'm going to remove these comments before I submit my solution. Doc, come back. We didn't mean to offend you, Doc. I did it. <laughs> So much, Neon. What? I didn't. No, we were talking to you, Doc. <laughs> I was asking if I scared you off because I didn't use any of your combinatorics solutions. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Neon, for that Twitch Prime sub. Much appreciated. Two streams in one day? Yep, it's caught us. <laughs> Is it submitting? It, that'd be a worse way to generate. Oh, okay. <laughs> They made formula. Okay, so here's the here's the fun part. We can see how other people have solved it. Um, this is very similar to my solution, except they are calculating the row and the column instead of having an array of arrays. Code caught a slug. I'll check it out. Though, I mean, does it add like a button to the page, or does it actually add the slug to the page? Oh, the triangle symmetric. I see. So you can iterate, iterate up to n divided by two, and then use that to fill out the rest of your triangle. They always ask, "How do I do it, Doc?" Never, "How are you doing?" It? <laughs> I always say, "What's up, Doc?" You know that. <laughs> um, code. Yeah, I'll definitely link to it. Well, this is the solutions, but this this will get you there. Okay, so they did it in a similar way, but instead of an array of arrays, they just used a single array and calculated the index as they went. Very cool. Um, this person did it recursively. So if n is one, return the base case. The previous one is in minus one, and we, ah! So we're calculating each individual row. So we push the first one in the row, then we push each value for that row, and then we push one. Uh, <laughs> that's a, it's super interesting. So this is basically recursively calculating each row. What's up, Doc? <laughs> um, cool. So in this one, we have a recursive function. This returns one. Otherwise, it returns n times n minus one. Is that accurate? And thank you, Mr. Gecko, for that follow. So all the way up to n, then for each row, math.round? Whoa! Was that dynamic programming using the previous solution to solve the next piece? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not super familiar with the term dynamic programming. Um, I think it's I think it's more than just this. Like, uh, using the previous solution, this is, re this is technically recursion. Um, you're recursively calling the function uh, to, to compute smaller results and then building it back up. But yeah. 3 equals E, 7 equals R. <laughs> yeah, but I think dynamic programming is more like meta, like it's analyzing its own program versus like ca just calling itself. And that one, they're rounding. They're taking advantage of the horizontal symmetry of rows. Yeah, this is super interesting. So they're... they're Somehow this calculates a value in the row itself, but it's f of i divided by f of e times f of i minus e, and then they round that to drop the decimal. That's crazy. What's up, Doc? You have to account for the fact that rows have alternating odd than even elements. Yeah. Weird. 
Uh, resources to start learning to code. I always recommend Free Code Camp. Yeah, check out. So people have asked me or, and like asked me to implement things with dynamic programming before, but I'm not super familiar with the term. Um, free Code Camp. Free Code Camp .org. Um, This is a good jumping off point. So in in the world of uh, well, and this is really if you want to learn web development, I always recommend for for new programmers, people that are trying to get into all of this, to learn JavaScript mainly because you can get started immediately. You don't really have to worry about a development environment. You can build things and share them with other people versus a, a compiled language where it's a bit harder to share things. So I'm, I'm recommending you learn JavaScript and HTML and CSS. But Free Code Camp, um, they have different courses. If you look at responsive uh, web design, the thing that I really like about Free Code Camp is they break everything down. So that you could kind of treat this as your learning plan. You may not like the lessons that they give you, but you could go in and look at each of these lesson titles and then find your own resources on, on these things. But if you go through all of this, you, you know enough to get a job in, in web development. So they have HTML and CSS, which is the web design, and then JavaScript algorithms and data structures actually teaches you the basics of programming. They start in basic JavaScript. So this is a really good resource. Um, there's also... Uh, the thing called the Odin Project? Project Project Odin? Project Odin. The Odin Project. <laughs> it's <clears throat> it's a very similar thing. Like, they have an online curriculum. Um, and it, I I would say, of all these online resources, just treat them as one resource in your in your toolkit of learning to code because uh, n looking at just one isn't going gonna to turn you into a program, programmer. Well, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Oh, Infected Note is saying Udacity nano degrees are free nowadays. That's cool. So you can check that out too. Uh, open source university on GitHub, but it's tough to follow unless you already had aptitude. Yeah, that's the tricky thing. For people that are just completely, totally new to everything, it's hard to find a, a learning plan. So check out the Odin project. Um, that's another resource. Um, what else? And then just YouTube. Um, so I don't really have any like intro to programming videos, but oh, you're very welcome. Hopefully it helps out. Um, but if you look at my playlist a while back, I used to do streams with my friend Tony. So there's uh, Newbie Tuesdays and there's uh, Noob Quest. Well, Noob Quest is a little, we did like this auth thing, which is a little more advanced. But uh, in these videos, I paired with someone who knew very little, if anything, about programming. And um, we basically built real working apps. So that might help you. <laughs> I know a lot of people really like this first one. The Well, not the first one. Um, build a full stack message board. Because you kind of learn the basics of uh, full stack web development and, and how all the things fit together. But any one of these videos is, is a decent watch for somebody that knows nothing because I'm literally pairing with someone that knows absolutely nothing. Well, I mean, he knows quite a bit. He knows a bit. <laughs> uh, Will Sentences, JS course on Frontend Masters. Definitely. Uh, yeah, Frontend Masters is a great resource as well. Front end. Though some of the stuff is a bit more advanced. Um, but if you're already in your career and, and know web development, like this is definitely a go-to resource because all of the the giants of, of web dev and such um, teach on here. Yeah, so if you want recommendations for YouTube channels, Academind is great. Yeah, they have so Academind has um, free YouTube playlists, but he also has Udemy courses. But the playlists here, he might have like intro to programming or something. Let's see. Yeah, that's the main thing, Oscar. Oscar, I stream on Twitch, post to YouTube. Right now, I'm in the process of editing some videos, and those I'm, I'm editing live streams so that they'll be more consumable for YouTube, but it's it's a long process. Um, I don't know if they have intro to JavaScript, but Academind is great. Um, Brad Traversy, Traversy Media is also great. Um, there are others, there are definitely others, but if you, if you look at them, you'll be suggested other YouTube channels too. Low level JavaScript is really cool. It's definitely not for beginners, but um, uh, it's a it's a fairly recent channel. Yeah, DevEd is cool for like uh, design stuff as well. Um, but actually, DevEd just d did recently release a course on uh, intro job intro to JavaScript. Design course is great. Design course used to hang out in my live streams, but he's on YouTube. I, have, I don't think I've seen him on Twitch yet. <laughs> design course Gary, Net Ninja has a lot of good videos. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, low level JavaScript is super cool because he implements things that you normally only see implemented in like C++, but he implements them in JavaScript. It's really cool. And thank you for that follow, Dr. Eagle Eye. I missed a chat from Doc. Okay, it'd be interesting to benchmark the solutions. I think division and multiply would be slower. Um, and about the powers of 11 thing, computing powers of 11 boils down to multiplying and then adding 11 repeatedly. So it's all the same computation in the end. Okay. I think basically I created the most performant solution without even knowing it. <laughs> oh, nice. That's good that you get a, a notification. Ben Awad is, is good too. I wouldn't recommend as, him as a beginner resource, but he's actually really good if you're in web development and wanting to, to dig, dig deeper. Web Dev Simplified is great too. Yep. Hello, Jorge. Welcome. <laughs> Quick stretch. <clears throat> oh, I see what you did, Andrew. You uh, replaced, literally replaced the URL with the slug. I love it. I guess I don't have temper monkey. Well, thank you, Murdoch. Cheers. <laughs> Posture check. Hey, keeping me healthy. Um, I thought I had this installed. Cool, but uh, I guess I, I don't. Um, but if you haven't heard of it, Tamper Monkey is really cool. It lets you write custom JavaScript to run on any web page. Um, munching on some Doritos. And thank you, uh, Web Dev with Seb. Thanks for that follow. <laughs> Coding Garden in YouTube is better than all. My my YouTube channel is interesting because it, the majority of it is live streams. I do have some edited videos, but. Yeah, and the thing is, before I mean, before before a lot of people started watching me, I treated my live streams as kind of like a, a classroom. So the live stream would be no more than an hour and a half, but it would be a fairly focused lesson, and I wasn't talking to the chat a lot. Oh, coding train, of course, of course. How could I forget the coding train? <laughs> if you're watching, Dan, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Um, but definitely check out coding train. He's amazing. Um, I've done a collab with him a couple times now. But if you check out the code playlist, actually, here's this. Who, whoever asked that earlier, who was it? Kringer. If you watch this code play, playlist, like you, you can build interactive things almost immediately. So um, uh, Dan Schiffman runs, or not runs, he's a, he's a part of the, uh, the Processing Foundation, which is a programming environment for building or for write, for creating like interactive programs. Yeah, and there's a Coding Train Discord and David's a mod on the Coding Train Discord. Um, but there's the, the P5 web editor um, where you can write code directly in the browser and then you see the results over on the right hand side. And why I think this is really good for beginners is because it's like instant feedback. Um, cause I could do, I, I don't know, does this work? Like fill zero, will it turn black? Okay, no, 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 oh, I see, it's background. So if I do background zero, black square, look at me, I'm a coder. <laughs> yeah, fun, fun function is great too. Uh, a, a lot of his older videos are really great for like learning uh, functional programming and uh, different concepts like that in JavaScript, but check out this code playlist. So this is a complete introduction to programming, but with P5.js. Welcome. <laughs> um, and just w by watching a couple of videos, you could already um, start writing um, or in building interesting visualizations directly in the browser, which is pretty cool. Joshua Fluke. I think I used to follow him. Um, Joshua Fluke. It's interesting to see my YouTube recommendations. Oh, this guy, yeah, I've seen him before. Uh, he has a lot of uh, videos on and streams just talking about like getting a job and interviews and stuff like that. Yes, in summary, YouTube is a great place and there's a ton, ton, ton to explore. <laughs> um, all right, so I just installed Tamper Monkey and now I can install this. So Tamper Monkey is really cool. Um, the best way to learn higher order functions, definitely check out Fun Fun Function. He has a ton of great videos on it, um, but um, I have just the playlist for you. So actually that, um, uh, new newbie Tuesday, new quest thing that I suggested. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> I keep getting redirected. Svelte is pretty cool. I, um, so last Saturday we did the, uh, front end framework showdown and I built one of, one of the apps with Svelte. Um, it's cool. I, it, it, it's cool, I'll say that. Um, 
I like the concepts, the the idea that they're they're at the end of the day there is no framework; it all gets tri stripped away. But the the main thing is it's still very early, and so there's not a huge ecosystem and community around it. What was I going to show? Uh, higher order functions, yes. Um, higher order methods. Here we go. I have this playlist, and this is the same thing. I, I paired with this person that knew very little about programming, but we talk about first class functions, higher order functions, and thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, Technomech, much appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, it's a Rickroll script. <laughs> I don't think it is. The code looks okay, unless it scrolls. Yeah, there's no extra code. But welcome, you can use emotes now. And if you, if you join our Discord, um, there are members only channels and every now and then I'll do a members only live stream. So check that out. But uh, this, we talk about higher order methods, the accumulator pattern, all, all that good stuff. So check, check out this playlist, but also check out fun, fun function because he's like the OG when it comes to higher order methods in JavaScript. Okay, what the heck? <laughs> it just keeps opening a new tab. All right, I've installed it. Um, now we're going to go to probably like a 5Q, and I think I'm going to do one of the suggestions. Uh, pick the peaks. Hello, one hot. Welcome. All right. See you later, Omhek. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> no worries, Leet Rose. Thanks for hanging out as well. <laughs> um, all right. It did it. Great work. Emotes, emotes to, um, uh, uh, Alka, look at, look at the extension that, um, Andrew Lane made. It literally replaces the URL with the slug. It's pretty dope, right? <laughs> Pick mine. Oh, uh, yours, I think yours was submitted after. Is it a 5Q? Filled chained HTML formatting. Oh, this looks interesting. Looks really interesting. Okay, here's the thing. I've been live for an hour and 12 minutes, so I probably only have time for like one more. We'll vote on it. Actually, we're not gonna vote on it. We're just going to do, we're gonna do the one that, that David suggested. Might be too difficult. Hey, you gotta believe in me. Oh wait, this is from Tekana. Is this the same Tekana that just uh, Twitch Prime sub? Techno, no, Technomech. <laughs> These are different people. <laughs> is Takana watching right now? Uh, yeah, I, so that's the thing. I have to do Andrew's code review, and we have to pick one more kata to do. <laughs> no voting. <laughs> Justice for Andrew. Um, how am I only using two gigabytes of RAM? I don't know, but isn't it great? <laughs> isn't it great? Like, I literally have Firefox running... And uh, NVS code. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I ordered a stream deck. Nice. I, you know, <laughs> okay, I was this close to ordering a stream deck last night. Um, yeah. I kind of want one. I kinda, I, but, but then I thought, like, I could just use, like, so Instafluff has that app uh, that he created called um, Stream Puppy. And it basically gives you, like, a stream deck on your phone. I was like, I could just use that. Then I don't got to buy a stream deck. But a stream deck is nice because it's always on. I don't know. Let us vote and then or ignore the result. I like that, <laughs> but actually, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the code review. I'm, I kind of want to get a stream deck too, but get more buttons. Yeah, this, the stream deck XL. The thing is, like, re it retails for two fifty right now. That's the other thing. I thought about using a MIDI controller. Um, do I have it? Just I'll be right back. This. So, um, this is actually a really old MIDI controller that I don't use anymore, but, uh, they, there's like a MIDI to OBS plugin. Uh, oh yeah, Alka says, I've written, I've written a, a code for a MIDI controller to control OBS. Yeah. I mean, I kind of want to as well, but I don't want to, yeah, I, I just want to use what InstaFluff has made. <laughs> I am into music or what, but I could make each one of these buttons switch scenes and technically like each one of the piano keys um is a different midi signal so i could make each one of these do different things i don't know hey jd Cezanne. it's good it's going good all right we're gonna vote what should we do next no not vote we're gonna take a poll 
What next? Do I have a MIDI expression pedal? I can use that for scrolling the chat window. <laughs> Um, I don't, but you may not have seen these before, but they're actually like ergonomic uh, mice for people that can't use their hands. A foot mouse. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, a two foot. Sh uh, uh, I knew about this because uh, I used to be I used to do ergonomics for my the last company that I worked at. But some people actually had these. So you literally control the mouse with your feet. So we could totally make that happen. <laughs> All right, uh, code review, Andrew's code. Um, pick peaks, 5Q kata, or what was the other one? That sounds so complicated. <laughs> I think, like, eventually you get used to it. I don't know. And hello, Merchan. Welcome, welcome. Wait, what Andrew? what's Andrew's code about? Can you link your code real quick, Andrew, so I can at least open it up for people to see? Mine. <laughs> you can definitely vote for yours. Just hang out and chat as a vote option. Here's, so, the thing is, if I was streaming on YouTube, I would just veto that immediately. But here's the thing. I don't have to upload this to YouTube. There doesn't have to be rewatch value. We're in the moment. What matters is now. Be here now. So yeah, we could just hang out. <laughs> hang out and chat. We are productive people. Now, <laughs> YOLO. Okay, so this is Andrew's library. Uh, it is an internationalization library. Um, it's a simple and easy to use internationalization library. And I think they're converting it to TypeScript. Do you have a branch where you're converting to TypeScript? Um, if we do the code review, I would probably open up a, a live share with his editor so I could just see the code that he's writing. Um, but it takes in your localization file and the languages you support. And then um, you pass in a language and your key or your string, and you get back the translation. Cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> Animate CJ self-portrait with PostNet. <laughs> um, OK, so here's, here's one of our options, filled chained HTML formatting. So we want to create an object with the method, methods for various HTML elements, div, p, span, and h1. So format div foo returns div with foo. Format span fizz returns span with fizz. But we can also link them together. So basically, this is like a, a functional function that can generate HTML. This is actually really cool. This is You could use something like this to build out a virtual DOM. So this is cool. So that's one option. And then the other one is a kata, where you pick the peak. So in this kata, you'll write a function that returns the positions and the values of the peaks of a numeric array. So you're given an array, you have to find the peaks and the valleys. Okay, so your options are code review Andrew's code, pick the peaks 5Q kata, uh, HTML chained 5Q kata, just hang out, geoguessr. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll let the votes go for, wait, three, minute, three minutes is fine. Geoguessr. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are silly. We're here to code, gosh darn it. Instant vote for GeoGuessr. I'm going to open my green tea. Actually, so I went to the grocery store today. It was actually pretty frightening because people were so close together and there were people not wearing masks. And I just basically never want to leave my house again because uh, Denver, Denver is no longer under the stay at home order. We're under a um, safer at home order, but nobody's listening to it. <laughs> if GeoGuessr wins, are you kidding me? We're here to code. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, we could go to India because uh, we didn't do that last time. But regardless, people are, are not taking, in, at least in this part of the world, are, don't seem to be taking COVID very seriously. Like they think, oh, it's all over now. We can just be all out and about. But I said that because I got this drink. And then when I got home, I put it in the freezer so that it would be cold so that I could drink it when I uh, was streaming. But then I forgot about it. And I pulled it out of the freezer right before I started streaming and it was actually frozen. But luckily it didn't explode. Under the everyone survive as you can order. Yeah. Cool. And thank you, Cheyenne, for that, for that hydrate. Oh, this tea is good. It's good tea. 
No, we're going to do it first. <laughs> uh, we honestly could do all three of these things. Um. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, there are different flavors. So I like the classic gold flavor. There's also like a cranberry one. Um, and then they have some ones that don't have sugar in them. But I, I don't like artificial sugar, so I don't really drink those. You have really big cans. <laughs> Well, this this is a this is a Colorado company, but this is like a um a natural is it organic? It's not organic, but this is like a natural version of you know the Arizona green tea. Yeah, it's just as bad here in Delaware, Eastern Shore, Maryland. Yeah, the thing is, it's just the the number of cases are just going to start to spike again. Everybody's so antsy to get out, and then they get out, and then they don't care, and they get close together, and everybody gets sick. Did you get a blue drink cover? That wouldn't be bad. <laughs> yeah, I basically just never want to leave my house again. Um, but not because I don't know, not not that I mean I don't want to say that like I'm I've, I'm scared and I just want to stay home all the time. But I don't know. I've been doing just fine being home all the time. Flatten the curve exactly. Uh, is yerba mate a tea or an energy drink? It's a tea. So it uh, yerba mate. Uh, is the loose leaf tea, um, and I get it in a canned beverage, <laughs> um, but it technically has quite a bit of caffeine, so it, it's a, it's it's tea and an energy drink. You could say that. Yeah, be, if we could all just relax. Twenty two thousand points. <laughs> So Doc would have used all of his points to vote for GeoGuessr. <laughs> it's all a bit surreal. I don't think so will be the same. They won't. They absolutely won't. Well, for like, I mean, j just the general culture shift of like so many, so many people uh, being allowed and able to work from home now and not wanting to go back to work. But yeah. Okay. We're going to do, we're going to code review. <laughs> we actually are going to code review Andrew's code and then we're going to play GeoGuessr. Um, so Andrew, if you want to DM me a, uh, a live share link, I can open it up. Um, and I don't really have the setup to do a voice call, but we can just communicate through chat if that's cool. Oh, that's great, being on an island. So GeoGuessr is a game where you are placed in Google Street View. Oh, wait, is this a read-only session? Or did you just post a public session? <laughs> uh, but GeoGuessr is a game where you're placed on um, Street View in a random place in the world, and you have a small view of the map, and you have to pinpoint where you are on the map just based on Street View. It's actually, it's pretty fun. Oh, I need to sign in. Give me a second. No, exactly. So the, um, so many people are actually able to watch now because they're at home. Um, and you can just like keep me on in the background or whatever, where usually you're at work and you can't do that. So yeah. Okay, so we're in. Yeah, I mean, same in, in Denver was a couple of days ago, but it's now a safer at home order. But yeah. Okay, so here we are. Exactly. Yeah, that's what happened last time. All right, Andrew, um, where should we start? And I'll, I'll go ahead and set a timer for 15 minutes. But uh, for those of you who are just joining us and wondering what's happening, uh, Andrew has redeemed code review. So if you look at the channel points down there, uh, once you get in a certain number of channel points, you can redeem a code review. Um, if it's a good time to do that, we will do the code review. So that's what we're about to do. Uh, source index.tsx. Quick stretch. <clears throat> um, and so 
for 15 minutes, and thank you, Hello Chicken, for that, for that stretch, but for 15 minutes, I'm going to review his code and potentially help him out with some things. I think he was converting things to TypeScript, so he wanted some help on how to get that working. Uh, do you have tests? You do have tests. Okay. Leak source code. <laughs> Focus mode. Ooh, thank you, Andrews. That's actually super interesting. It's a combined code review and focus mode. So we're actually we're gonna go we're gonna go into fo focus mode um, for eight minutes, and we will also enable emote only chat. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> and actually. Um, I mean, I'm going to reset this timer because we haven't really even started yet. <laughs> okay, Andrew, uh, what's, the, what's the best way to communicate? I guess I could bring up Discord. What do you think? We could just literally type inside of the editor here. <laughs> Sir. What? Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> All right. Let me hide my screen for a second. Yeah, I'll pull up Discord. Um... I'm also I'm going to I'm going to pause focus mode cuz I got to figure this out. Um All right. Where where are you? Can you DM me Andrew? I can't find you. Beans. <laughs> nice. I'm just laughing because of our previous messages. Um, and thank you, Crip, for that follow. Here we go. So this is me and Andrew. We're chatting. So Andrew, where should we, where should we look first? So right now I am in. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll go back into focus mode. Uh, focus resume. And thank you, uh, Tyok, for that follow. So for those of you just joining us, we're, we're doing a code review, and we're currently in focus mode. So in seven-ish minutes, we're going to talk to the chat again. So we're in index.ts. Uh, um, and so this is an international internationalization library that Andrew's been working on. And he's currently converting it into TypeScript. And he might have wanted some help. So yeah, so there's a type error here. Argument of type T language, key of T language is not assignable to parameter of type T language. So they might want some help with that. There's also a type error there. They're typing. Um, but just in general, let's get like an overview of what's happening here. So I18N extends language. If we look at the types, language is an object that has a key of any, any string and a value that's either a string or a language. <laughs> it's like a recursive definition. Um, these, are, these are very, very uh, generic type definitions. We might want to get a little more strict with it, but we'll see. And then translation is either a string or null. Okay. Uh, I think it's just a start, and that's okay. Um, and then we have all the languages that get loaded in. The constructor takes in a folder, which is, I guess, where you want to load the languages from, the language, the li list of languages you want to load, and the fallback language. Cool. Are you okay, Andrew? <laughs> you stopped typing. <laughs> did you did you lose internet? Um, languages is an array that has all the keys. Thumbs up. <laughs> what do you want from me? Um, I'm guessing anywhere there's a type error, you basically you want help on getting rid of that type error to make it make it work. Is that accurate? Types of errors. Okay, so um, right now, and I guess if we run the tests, will those give us back the TypeScript errors? Let's try it. Can you share a uh, console with me? 
Yeah, there we go. So, found three errors. Can you do it again? <laughs> Oh, looks like I can only see a certain part of the console, but that's okay. Make it big, really big. Oh, wow. Well, this is going swell. <laughs> this is going, just, here we go. Okay, much better. That word wrapping, yeah, that was so weird. All right, let's look at our first TypeScript error. And I think this is the one that I saw. So, uh, well, there's another one. So in this reduce here. So I'll just look, I'll just look at the code. This reduce right here. So keyword. Um, language is what we're translating to. to. Keyword is, I, I'm guessing like the, the lookup string for that translation. And then we have our variables. So um, if we look at the test for the translate function, a keyword could be something like this or something with periods. So the reduce right now is looking at those periods. So that's, that's the thing that we're trying to fix. So split that keyword on a period. Um, and then for each value, um, we're going, so we're going to get each of the separated items in the period. And then I guess we're creating like a nested object here. But the error is, um, usually in TypeScript, you got to scroll all the way down to find a decent error. So type string is not assignable to typed T language, undefined. Uh, type string or language is not a fine. Yeah, so um, languages.get is going to return a T language, which is technically a string. Like if we look back at the types, um, Language is technically a string, right? So I think we can actually just say that this key uh, is of type uh, T language. Right? And um, it's not proper code review without breaking some code. And Language cannot be used as an index type. And so we're returning res. Res, okay, wh what is this dot languages? Key is a string. Okay, so key is a string. Res and res at item. This dot languages gets set up here. So it's a map. We're taking in the string languages. Uh, and each language. Is the key in the map and then the value is the required JSON file. OK. Um, but does this dot underscore languages have a map? OK, so we're saying that um, language is that JSON file that we're loading in. And if we look at like example of a JSON file, we have like nested, nested, nested. Okay, so I see. So language is literally just an object <laughs> with some keys uh, and some values there. Now, Where I think this could get easier in terms of type definitions is instead of using um, like just a generic key string, you could make this a map as well. Like after you read it in, you could parse it and turn it into a map. And I think that's, I guess that's what you're trying to do here because initially we read it in and then it's just a JSON file. And then right here, um, we're getting that specific language. Yeah, the time, I think the timer's still going though. Yeah, but I'll, I'll disable uh, emote only mode. Oh, thank you, Alka. Um, so that 
this is the actual object itself. <laughs> that is the translation file. Uh, and then each key in the item that we're looking for, so we're returning the object itself and the object at that key. <laughs> Here's another focus mode. <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, thank you, Mustafa, for that. We'll figure this out. We're, we're going to get this, Andrew. <clears throat> um, focus start eight. No! <laughs> You can pass in your own definition. So uh, I-18 in your language, which is, um, but lang language is ultimately um, a JSON object with keys of the translation types and then the values of what they can be translated to, right? Um, okay. But I guess I'm trying to figure out what you're doing here because you're saying, uh, Result and result is at that key. So you're trying you're trying to determine if that key is in the language itself. Right. Andrew's Andrew's typing. <laughs> I wonder why I can't see their cursor though. Oh, because it's read only mode probably. So if the type of res is a string, return res. No, if type of res at key. Right? Yeah. So if if the language itself at the given key that you're looking up is a value, and so what, what we're, we're working on here is nested values. So if we get a value, we're done, right? Um, Otherwise, we want to reach in and grab that nested object. Mastermind, welcome, everyone. <laughs> We're actually in focus mode right now. So uh, it is emote only mode for the next uh, seven or so minutes. But soon, 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 I will say hello to everyone. Uh, and we're currently doing a code review. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, and can we get a shout out for Mastermind? Uh, anybody watching, if you haven't checked out Mastermind, he's great. I think he was doing um, uh, some AWS classes today. It's pretty cool. But what we're doing right now is I'm actually in a live share session with Andrew and I'm doing a code review. So uh, he has this TypeScript code and I'm trying to help him uh, convert some or fix some of these type errors. So, oh, I see, I see. So here's 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 where, I, where I'm hung up, uh, Andrew, is I'm, I probably wouldn't do this with a reduce I mean, you, you can, but that, that's where I'm getting hung up because basically if we do the dot splitting, we could say like nested dot with variables. So um, we'll say if the result at that key is a string, just return that item itself. But the issue with that is in the net, I mean, if it, I guess ultimately this will only happen on the very last ac accessor, accessor, right? only happened on the very last one, which is then when we return not res at key, we return res at key. Like that. Um, yes, that's it. <laughs> that's the winner. <laughs> uh, we got it. So, but now it's complaining about... Um, Yeah, the so the, and then the issue here with the with the reduce is on the very last iteration we are returning a string but the reducer starts off as an object and TypeScript does not like that at all. Um, so actually, we could say res is of type language or string, <laughs> um, and then key is technically a string. Yeah. Um, languages.get is going to give us back a language, right? Okay. So type undefined is not assignable to type string or language. Ah, because this potentially could return undefined, I think, right? This is tricky. I mean, I guess, I guess technically, we, instead of, 
writing it as a reduce and a ternary makes this really, really hard to follow. Um, it's, I'm just even, it's okay if, if I do this. So, um, say if res instance of language. Else, wait, no, <laughs> you don't. You don't like that. <laughs> do, do do what you want. <laughs> Language is a type. Implements. Oh, it's an interface. Not it's it, it's an interface, right? So, uh, implements. How do we check that? There's a way in TypeScript to determine if something uh, inherits from something, right? Interface type check. Well. Yeah, there's a case where the reduce doesn't return a string. Because if you're only if you've only requested like the second nesting, then that's gonna give you back the entire op so like if you're if you do let's say somebody said nested dot double nested they would get back this which is an object which is of type language um yeah so the return type is language or string i agree <laughs> all right so we're not gonna do this type check anymore but um let's fix this double nested The thing is, this type this type is really hard <laughs> because this is like just a general object, and technically a string implements an object, and you technically can index into a string to get a value. It's really tricky, Andrew. I would say let's not do a reduce. <laughs> honestly, honestly, uh, and I find myself doing this a lot in TypeScript, where, um, yeah, like we we could we could do this with a loop. Go for it. <laughs> Right. So we, we could say we could say like this. So we could say um, the uh, the keys is our keywords dot keyword dot split, right? And that's going to give us each individual value in the array, right? Um, then we have we'll say let value equals the so value starts off as nothing, but we're basically trying to find the value. And then um, uh, we'll say while there is no value, we'll say um, and where's the language? We need to actually get the language. And thank you, uh, Alan is good for that follow. <laughs> um, lang is going to be this dot languages dot get language. Hey, Instafluff, what's up? <laughs> A language in the nest is worth two in the double nested. <laughs> So uh, lang is that. Okay, so um, then we'll say uh, value. And okay, focus mode is over. <laughs> value equals lang uh, at the current key. And we'll say key is equal to keys dot uh, shift. <laughs> Demonetize. Because uh, shift... Um, yeah, welcome, welcome back from emote only moaned. Um, we were we're currently doing a code review. We're I mean we're at the fifty minute time limit. Andrew, you can have your points back. This this was probably not a good use of your fifteen minutes. But I want to look up really quick array shift uh, because array shift returns the first value in the array. I believed shift. Yes, that's how you spell it. Yeah, it removes the first element from the array. <laughs> this is over my head too, um, so that's okay. So we're gonna get the key. And we'll say, uh, if there is no key, then just return. Like, or not return. We're going to break out of this loop. Ah. And I guess we don't, we don't want to... Um... Well, uh, Andrew, you're already doing that right here. You're saying if it doesn't have it. You're already doing that right there, right? So, you don't, yeah, yeah you, don't need, you don't need that. At this point, we know that the language exists. Now I can say hi. What's up, InstaFluff? <laughs> I, I want to get this working without the reduce, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say hello to everyone and, and all that good stuff. Okay, so um, we split it. We then grab an individual um, 
key. If there is no key, we just break out of the while loop, and we're going to say while, uh, value equals language at that key. Uh, now, what's the type error? Uh, type string or language is not assignable to type string. Type language is not assignable. So value is of type language or string. There we go. We've done it. <laughs> we've done it. I believe, I believe we've done it. Uh, because, so, yeah, and, and let's just look at, we can look at the value that comes out of it, but, um, so while there is no value, grab the next key, try to get it from the language, and then, oh, no, 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 that, this isn't going to work, this is going to break too soon. All keys dot length. This is it. <laughs> All right. I might have uh, gotten some follows, and I appreciate you if I did. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Crip and Tyok and Anthony Stack and Alan is good for those follows. And thank you again, Mastermind, for that raid. Sorry it was at such a weird time. Um, but welcome everyone. Three, two, one, one, two. <laughs> TypeScript sucks. No, TypeScript is cool. I like TypeScript. Sort of. I've never said that before, but it's okay. But shift is big O of N. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. So the thing is, like, how deeply nested are you going to get into this language object is the thing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Did it work? Did it work, Andrew? <laughs> Do we know if it worked? Open the terminal. I can't see the terminal. Ah, okay. So you have one failing test and um, should throw an error if there are no languages, should return null if there's no value. But it fails for this one. Should allow updating languages. Does that mean it's working? <laughs> I don't know if it's working or not, Andrew. Because <laughs> um, this, this is the translate function. If we look at your tests, where is the translate? Should return null if there is no value. So it is working. Should allow updating languages? I, I still can't tell. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. The thing about a reduce is in JavaScript, you can get really tricky with it. Like, you can have a reduce that, like, changes the type of the accumulator as the reduce goes, and TypeScript doesn't like that, which is why this, I mean, it's, this is a less verbose, I would say this is a, an easier to read solution as well, right? So we get all the keys, we grab the first key. I mean, technically, <laughs> we could reverse it and then pop it instead of shifting it. And thank you, Slayer's Grecken, for that follow. Is for const key of keys not allowed? I guess we could do that too, yeah. Because um, we, we're looking at each key. Yeah, why not? But the I think the, the scenario that I was trying to get at was what if you only did double. I mean, I guess that could work. Yeah, that works. And then you don't need any kind of break. Yeah, and then you don't need that. <laughs> Done. <laughs> let's, run, let's run the test again. It's too easy. Um, yeah, it's still working. Great. <laughs> that, was way, that was way too easy, right? Cool. Uh, Andrew, I will let you redeem that that code review thing again um, uh, next time. And then we can work on some of those other type errors. But that was fun. Thank you for redeeming that. Um, it was way weird and different than anything else we've, we, we were doing today. But that's okay. So what we're going to do now is um, reverse, pop it, shift it. <laughs> the club dance moves. Since Doc inflated the poll and he only did the kata, can you do a poll to vote on which of the two katas to do after the code review? 
The thing is, Doc used his points. <laughs> On honestly, honestly, his points definitely count. They definitely count. But I am not going to be streaming for that much longer. Uh, we have we have a good point there. <laughs> um, but this challenge looks really cool, and we'll do it next week. How is how have you been waiting so long for this challenge, David? That you want to see it done right now? I, I'm actually I'm curious though. I want to see what tests are provided because this is something that I would absolutely do test driven style. Um, where if we don't have enough tests, I would write my own tests because um, it's super interesting. Okay, next week. This will be the second thing we do next week because <laughs> it's, it's a little challenging. Don't worry about my points. To the no, we're going to play GeoGuessr because I have to go in like 10 minutes. So we're going to play GeoGuessr. Field chained HTML format. Yeah, so I'll, I'll link this kata. It's super interesting. Actually, does that still take us there? Would you look at that? It does. Okay. Um, I don't think I can re return Doc's points because they used them in a poll. Um, but you have to write a function that basically generates HTML based on the, the function call. So at, at the simplest level, you could say format div foo. That just returns a div with foo inside of it. But you can start to nest them. You can say format format.div.h1, format format.div.p.span. And you can infinitely nest it to generate HTML. Um, it looks super fun to in implement. Oh, wow. And then you can nest format calls. Yeah, this is super, like, th this is basically like building out format. <laughs> like building out uh, almost like a virtual DOM tree uh, and kind of like your own version of jQuery, sort of. I don't know. It's super cool. I like it. We'll do that next week. You can make a poll again. GeoGuessr would win. <laughs> All right, we're going to play GeoGuessr. And actually, I don't think I ever canceled my uh, my pro subscription. I paid two whole dollars for it. Oh, no, I paid $3 because I, I did it monthly. Do we have to fight the foo? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, I actually don't know what my GeoGuessr account is. <laughs> I, don't, I, like, I didn't mind paying it, though. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, geo guesser. Oh, I guess I created an account. Okay. Well, I mean, I didn't log in with Google. <laughs> yeah, I will change my category in a second. I definitely will. Um, all right. I forgot my password. That's my password manager. I just clicked forget, forgot password. Super secure. The Foo Fighter is going to be doing a great job because we've never even had to worry about the Foo. <laughs> Use LastPass. It's 2020. Okay. <clears throat> and um, and thank you, uh, Tamagotchi Baby, for that follow. And Andrew, I don't know if you know it or not, but um, VS Code Live Share shows me your real name. I'm not going to tell anybody, but... <laughs> Um, it it tells me who you are. You might, I mean, I might know it already. I don't know. Yeah, I don't use a pass password manager. I just use the same password on every website and add a five to the end of it if it's a Wednesday. Um, okay. Do I have pro? Yeah, I've been a pro explorer since 425. <laughs> Andrew is not Andrew. <laughs> um, okay, so we are, we are going... <laughs> type one if Andrew's name is Andrew. <laughs> he's Andrew to us. I should have mentioned... I shouldn't have said anything. It's he's Andrew to us in our hearts. In our hearts, it's Andrew. Um, okay, but I think it's his, uh, uh, it's his GitHub uh, name too. But it's fine. Did I scare you, Andrew? <laughs> I didn't mean to scare you. You're gone. <laughs> um, you twit face? No, it, it told me a different name. I'll, I'll, I'll DM you. I'll DM you. Okay. Browse maps. What we decided uh, is we are um, we are going to try to go to India. So if if you're watching from India right now, 
just say hi in the chat or say, say I'm, I'm watching from india or hello type one i don't know let me know i think there are at least a few at least a few people watching from india no i'm not shocked i'm just i'm shocked that vs code live share gave me their name it is currently oh it's 8 a.m in new delhi i hello from india i krish <laughs> imagine usernames um I, I krish are you the only one watching from india i think we'll still do india because um last time there were a lot of people watching from india Indiana. Famous places in India. I think this is it. It might, it might have been your middle name. I don't know. Hi, I'm in India. No, this is India. It's another part of the world. <laughs> um, type one in the chat if you want to see me play this. And I'll also, I'll update my Twitch category. Um... Famous places. There's got to be a better way. Can I do set category? Guess not. Hi, I'm an indie game developer. Shall I redeem focus mode? <laughs> now that's gonna make it way harder. I need all the help I can get. I Chris cool, you gotta you gotta help us out. Um Geo Guesser, here we go. Pascal's triangle of zero. I actually didn't implement that. I think that would have returned an empty array. Um Okay, we've changed our category. And now it's time to play. So if you're new to this game, uh <laughs> it's it's pretty fun. Uh, basically, oh, hey, Shaggy, what's up? Uh, and I'm going to say this again because you know I didn't see it. I thought you had a mohawk this whole time. I mean, it's it's basically a strip of my hair that exists right here. Just this, this one strip, and then I put it into a little top knot. It's kind of like a mohawk. Um, okay, here we go. So we're going to be dropped onto the map in in a random street view, and we have to determine where on the map we actually are. <laughs> a faux hawk? In a way. In a way. Okay, so. Um, we are somewhere. <laughs> Basically, we can just walk around and try to find landmarks or anything like that. This is, this is, this seems like a, uh, it is India. Yeah, are, are you in India, Gazija? You're not, are you? I thought you... This is India, <laughs> but where in India? Wait, there's a sign. Let's read the sign. Don't stick golden foil on the monument. <laughs> I guess that's a thing. People get golden foil that. Oh yeah, you're. Uh... Oh yeah, you're Croatia. Okay, that's. I was like, yeah, you're not. You're not in India. Um, but yeah, just remember, everyone, don't stick golden foil on the monument. <laughs> All right, uh, we're definitely at some sort of like archaeological site, right? Because th that looks like an area that's being dug out. Um, these people are learning. From, from like a monk, it seems. Stick golden foil on me instead. <laughs> um, there's lots of people convening. All right, what is uh, way to the toilet? Plucking flowers, leaves, and walking on lawn is prohibited. Wow, there's so many rules here. So many rules. <laughs> um, Varanasi, is that where we are? I need to find the gift shop. The gift shop will tell us where we're at. Ah, that looks like a gift shop. Let's go over there. Oh, now we're like in it. <laughs> they are very informative signs, but they don't tell us where we are. This is actually really cool. We're like, we're in, uh, in the arc. I, I, it feels like it's a, it's a, it's an archeological, like some place that is being, um, Hey, that's me <laughs> from a long time ago. Yeah, I either have a bunch of hair or just a little bit of hair clumped in one spot. 
Okay. We're going to the gift shop. Is this the gift shop? This is probably not a gift shop. I hope that's not offensive. Oh, no. I don't want to do that. Icarish Cool. Do you have any idea where we are? <laughs> you have any idea? It could be a lot of places. Every place almost looks the same. <laughs> okay. It's where Buddhism was founded? Really? Was Buddhism founded in India? Murdoch has an idea. Help us. <laughs> Is it against the rules if I try to search for it on Google? Not if you give me very discreet clues about it. I'm usually I'm usually like very very uh, stubborn. Like people will be telling me things, and I kind of want to figure it out myself. So, yeah, we could. T oh, 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 beautiful! I found some signs. Look at this. Found some signs. Majestic guy gave me two clues. So here's the thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's gone now. He deleted it. <laughs> but I don't think that's gonna help me in any way. Buddhism was created in India. Okay. Um, archaeological summit. You are the something prohibited to protect this monument. What's on the gift shop gift shop cart outside? Let's see. I mean, it's not. A, I don't think it's a gift shop cart. I think it's it's like a it's like a food cart or something. Check the outside for road signs. All right, let's do it. I can't get out though. I'm stuck. I somehow got out before. Maybe it's around this way. Everyone's so interested. Oh, well, at least they were in the person wearing the Street View cam. Oh, they, <laughs> they have t-shirts with I Heart Monument on it. Um, okay, this guy is standing in the doorway, and I can't get out. Move. Move. I really don't know how I got out there before. Was it over here? Pure cold drinking water. Washrooms. Wheelchair for physically challenged visitors. <laughs> the thing is, even with this Majestic Eye, like, I have no... So, uh, like, I literally have no way of finding that on the map. Like, I, I, we know we're in India, so I just zoom in on India. But look how big this 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 country is. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, NPCs blocking the exit for sure. But somehow there was a glitch. Somehow I was able to get out there before. I don't know how. Hey, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, that gate's wide open. Just clip through them. <laughs> okay. Moving through time and space. Ghosts. What did the stand say? Something about Gaylord? Gaylord. Kaylord? Far northeast India. Okay, that's a good hint. <laughs> uh, I, Chris, are you still here? Do you, do you know what this is yet? Agra? Oh, it is Gaylord. I think I think that's just a brand of peanuts, <laughs> like a brand of. Um... Oh no, it's a brand of ice cream. I thought that I thought those were roasted peanuts. Yeah, it's just ice cream. We have their phone number. We could call them and see where they are. Okay, back into the monument. The thing is, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Beetle, the 1934 U.S. something. 
Visit the monuments. Maybe that could help. Okay. The, the thing is, I can't get out of this place. Like, I can't get out of this place to um, to see, like, even a road, a road sign. Because it wouldn't let me go past the gate. I literally... Oh, this is nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Please do not sit or walk over the excavated remains. The protected monument is the ice cream stand. Yeah, this is just the way to get to that ice cream stand. Ooh, okay, I found that that sign looks promising. It's a promising sign. Ashokan Pillar. These are the fragments of a 15.25 meter high monolithic pillar. Oh. Okay. I'm going to use Google. I'm going to I'm going to use DuckDuckGo. <laughs> is that is that is that against the rules to to search for Ashokan Pillar? Pillars of Ashoka? Duck it. We won. <laughs> all right. So this this narrows it down. This is the place of all the all the different pillars. Um Oh wait, so they're dispersed throughout the entire subcontinent. So that doesn't narrow it down at all. GG. <laughs> Vidisha, India? No, look, they're everywhere. They are literally everywhere. North, northern part, at least. Technically, this is cheating. That's okay, because I am, I am completely and totally out of my element. I don't know where we are. There's no way to get to even like a street sign. Find the one that looks like the one you can see. The thing is, it's remains. <laughs> uh, Vaishal. That's why it looks so similar, because it's everywhere. Yeah, so he, even Ikrish Kul, who, li who lives in India, could not tell the difference. Is this it? It's the remains. It, it's not actually standing. Right? The third is early. Gupta script refers... For some reason, my feathers back end makes uppercase letters into lowercase letters. Oh, for like the endpoints? Yeah. So if if you're if you're trying to create camel cased routes, don't do that. Use dashes, because not every place you deploy will respect the camel casing. Cool image proxy. <laughs> um, will you? High chances of Vaishali. It's the primary location. Okay. So, if we look at Vaishali, right there, all right? Bigger. 15.25, did it say that on the sign? Yeah, 15.25 meter high monolithic pillar, but it's a fragment. It's not the full thing. Oh, when I insert it into the database. Well, that's weird. I've never seen, heard heard of that issue before. Sonarth. Brute force all monuments. <laughs> Is Sonarth the city? Is it on the map? Do you see it on the map? This is hard. <laughs> Oh, Bihar, India. Varanasi. It was on the map. It's near to Patna. Okay. Sanarth, Sanarth, India.
Where in the world? <laughs> I remember when CJ would get the look. So that's like... <sighs> We, we were actually able to see street signs is the thing and monuments. We are stuck in this park and there are no other monuments. I just had it on the map. Now it's gone. Okay, so I go deeper. What are people saying? Uh, Sarnarth. I don't see it. Is it on the map? Type one if it's on the map. Type zero if it's not. <laughs> North of Patna. Sanarth Varnasi Uttar Pradesh. Where am I? <laughs> Zoom out a little bit. Possibilities are endless. North, middle. Psh. Hello, Lakshman. Welcome, welcome. Are you by chance in India, Lakshman? Because we're trying to figure out where we are. <laughs> middle, middle, north. Uh, we know that we're we're in this general area. Uh, and I'm looking, pin it with your eyes closed. <laughs> I'm looking for Sarnath Varnasi Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> North of Patna Basaf. I guess I see Patna right here. That's, that's easy enough for me to locate. Um, how far north? I have to zoom in. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome, Lakshman. Are you in India, though? Let us know. Are you in India? Just missed it. Not that far. Middle of <laughs> north. What does it mean? Um, I think it's this green area right here. That's what I think. Maybe not. Oh, the, near the south side of India. Okay, so you might not you might not know the northern part. It's in the middle of the USA. It's in middle north, like Middle Earth. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna. I mean, y'all are gonna hate me for this, but I think I'm just gonna pick a point on the map. Like, how, how close am I, right? Like, am I really close? <sighs> Sarnath. Sarnath. Go to Patna, then scroll north like twice. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're in Patna. One. Oh, that's too, that's too much. Follow the road north, first intersection. Really close. Just zoom in. Road 74. Yeah, I don't see any ice cream either in Stafluff. <laughs> it's west of Patna. That's why I'm missing it. Okay, so it's like northwest. We're going to try again. Wait, I thought you said it was west of a river, though. You miss the inter is this the intersection or is this the intersection? I can't tell. Or is this the intersection? There, a bit left. But where? There's stream delay. <laughs> okay. It's at the which intersection? <laughs> I'm 
those are all intersections. <laughs> I just saw a green thing with a pillar on it. What, on my map? No. Southwest. Huh. I was too close. Use the river. Okay. I really, I, I guess I kind of don't even really even know what I'm looking for, though. Those pillars are the green things. It's green. It says Ashka pillar at the intersections four way north. Is green on my map or green on your map? Are you colorblind? Am I colorblind? <laughs> Middle North. Uh, the text might be green. Okay. Find Patna, follow the river west. This is Patna. And this is... There's two rivers. Go to Patna. Go to the first four-way intersection north and zoom in. Stay there. Okay, go to Patna. The first four-way intersection north is here. Right? Me too. <laughs> oh, the land is green. Okay, zoom in. So there's too many intersections. Right there. No. The next one. So this one? Patetti Playground. I found it! <laughs> it's temporary closed, though. Does that mean we can't go there? <laughs> yes, I found it. I found it. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Uh, we, have to, we have to pinpoint it to this exact spot. <laughs> All right, so we have to, so we're, we're on the map, but uh, we need to find, what is that thingy? Uh, archaeological Buddhist remains. That's, that, okay, that's the circle thingy. And if I'm looking at it from this direction. <laughs> Wait, do I see the pond? I don't see the pond. We need a version of this game just for ice cream stands. That's not the right one. It might not be. It might not be. Um, I want the Sarnath Buddhist temple. Okay. Well, we found... Look, we found an Ashik, well, Sh Ashika pillar. Okay? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with right there. Done. Okay, we found the wrong one. <laughs> we were way off. <laughs> way off. <laughs> we were over here. It was way over here. Well. <laughs> All right. Only four more to go. <laughs> Only four. Three more to go. Okay. Uh, I told you. <laughs> I picked the totally wrong ice cream. India is very hard. Okay, let's see if we can find some street. That's not a street. Oh, look at these people. Look at look at them. <laughs> They're so happy. <laughs> the thing is, those th those aren't street views. These are just people's pictures. Yeah. Like this isn't this isn't a street view that yeah, it's on the coast. We know we know that for sure. But yeah, it's not a street view. It's literally pi pictures people have taken. Which means it's really hard to move around. Find somebody looking lost with a local map. India does not have Street View. Oh, that's probably it then. All right. Where is your map set? Taking pictures, taking pictures. 
Well, we're on the coast. Which coast, though? Are we still in? Yeah, the, all of these are in India. <laughs> this, game, this game is one Q. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so, well, measure the angle of the sun, okay? All of India is along the coast. We have a 50% chance of getting it right, right? Because half of it? I don't know. Um, it's, there's literally coast everywhere. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. Okay, yeah, so I can at least go here. Can I go over there? Yeah, I, I'm I'm stuck. There's there's not really less than fifty percent. Okay, there's like a slight curve right there, so I'm gonna guess we are right there. Let's go. Not bad. <laughs> if we zoom into the lady's watch for the time and measure the sun, we'll narrow it down to the right country. Well. I was only uh, 470 miles off. Nailed it. All right, <laughs> next round. Okay, this... Is this the Taj Mahal? Taj Mahal, yes. Yes, we can figure that out. I actually, <laughs> actually don't know... Yeah, 470 miles away, it's not bad. I actually don't know where the Taj Mahal is. Is it in Mumbai? Where's the Taj Mahal? What city is it in? It's not the Taj Mahal. It's either the one in India or the one in Vegas. I want to get close to it. The closer I get, the farther away it seems. Victoria, Talcata, or Taj Mahal, Agra. <laughs> Are you just messing with me now, Pixa? North middle. <laughs> or is it literally in the north, in the middle north? Taj Mahal confirmed. Okay. Now I just got to... That's definitely the Taj Mahal. In before Taj Mahal is located in a city named Taj Mahal. But what part of India is it in? Look between Pakistan and China. Ah, so it is in the Middle North. <laughs> West of Patna. <laughs> uh... Agra, Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> this is bad. This is very bad. Right from New Delhi... Oh, New Delphi. <laughs> it's Uttar Pradesh. Agra is... Okay, here's Agra. Woo! Okay. Whew. I don't need to zoom in that much. Should I just be able to see it? Southeast of New Delhi. So where's New Delhi? We see Agra. Here-ish. Hey, no, no worries. North, north of Morena. Wait, Marina is in, like, Italy. South of New Delhi. East of Agra. Right there where my cross was. <laughs> There's too much of a delay. I don't know. Like, there? Zoom in straight into Agra. Oh, look at that. The Taj Mahal is also temporarily closed. <laughs> it's literally the middle north. I'm not even messing. Yeah, yeah, we found it. That's, I would, I would consider that the middle north. There we go. <laughs> We're in the middle, the middle north. Come back. Okay. Uh, Taj Mahal. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we have to find where we are at the Taj Mahal. So there's that building. And there's the main building. We are... Wait, wait, wait. And there's that little square thing. We are right there. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> In the land of the Middle North. Where the shadows lie. <laughs> All right, we got two more to do. Good game, everyone. Yeah, good game. All right. Uh, oh, that didn't didn't mean to do that. Um. This looks European, doesn't it? I don't. I mean, maybe not. The sign is blank. It's a blank sign. Wow, that's it. <laughs> you, you know what this is? Oh, okay, let's see. Indian War Memorial Museum. Uh, Archaeological Survey of India. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but where is it? <laughs> I'm going to search it. This, this is really hard. This is really hard. So uh, Indian... War Memorial Museum. And thank you, Mustafa, for that hydrate. No, CJ, you can't. Okay, I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that. And thank you, Otoad, for that follow. New Delphi City. Delphi? Like the programming language? Wait, is there a Delhi and a New Delhi? Ah, Delhi is just north of New Delhi. New Delphi is greater than Old Pascal. <laughs> uh, wait, where's Delhi at? Is Why is there such a delay? Why don't I see Delhi? New New Dino is greater than old node. <laughs> um Old Cobol? Expand. This is definitely cheating. I'm cheating so hard right now. But that's okay. <laughs> that's really okay. Zoom in New Delhi a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely in New Delhi. Here's the Red Fort. North of New Delhi by like half an inch based on my zoom rate. At this zoom level, I should see it, right? India War Memorial Museum. Look for a Kanat place. It's to the right of that. Too right. It's close to that. That's what I thought. We're going to zoom in a little more. Under the red line. Ah, okay. Is it the red fort? Larry and I. <laughs> in Y. What's up? <laughs> Everyone should check out uh, Larry and y, in y. He's also a member of our Live Coders team. Did we get a shout out for InstaFluff earlier? We must have, right? It is Red Fort. Okay. You <laughs> shout out how locks <laughs> Last streaming. No, and no. <laughs> the Autobot did. Cool. Uh, definitely check out InstaFluff's channel as well. He's also a member of our Live Coders team. Um, okay. So it is the Red Fort, I guess. 
Let's figure out where we are, though. So there's that thingy, and then there's that thingy. But what is this thingy? Is there a sign here? It's right here. So obvious. <laughs> I'm not going to click it. This is the best red fort. I found it. Zoom in on red fort. Wait. Here's the deli gate. Yeah, I, I think a lot of times these are, um, it may not actually be Google Maps. It might have literally just been somebody that took a bunch of spherical pictures. Never going to give Red Fort up. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious, what is this that I'm looking at? Here's a sign. Let's read the sign. No, I want to see that sign. Okay. And this is Dewan Ayam. Red Fort is the museum. That's Dewanayam. What does this say? And that's in, uh, is that Hindi? Right of the Institute of, of Archaeology between the two buildings on the map. Ah, there it is. Dewanayam. The Rang Mahal. Here's the thing. I think we're like right here, right? I think we're between these two buildings, but this says Institute of Archaeology and it's not, it doesn't say the, the war museum. Oh, well, we're going to go with that. 10 meters. <laughs> Great work, everyone. Great work. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So, I already know that this is not Street View because people's pl uh, faces are not blurred out. So um, this is literally somebody just took a picture. So am I going to be able to walk around? No, I literally cannot walk around. I can zoom, but I cannot move around. But does anyone know what this monument is? <laughs> what is this? Hard mode. Yeah, I literally can't move. Uh, let's see. Farash Cafe and Bakery. Is that what this is? Did you see that? Oh, yeah, here we go. Farash Cafe and Bakery. A place with no social distancing. <laughs> What's up, Totally Sane? Uh, we are not writing any code. We are, we are dropped on the map in the middle of India, and we need to figure out where we are just based on our surroundings. Sharminar Gate. Okay. Parasha Cafe and Bakery. <laughs> yeah, Sharmanar Gate. Okay. Now, where in India is that? South India. A creepy location game. <laughs> sort of. So you're dropped into Street View. Sometimes it's a, just a picture view like this. It's the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, you're dropped into, like, a Street View, and then you have to pinpoint exactly on the map where it is. What the India? Here's your hint. Hyderabad. <laughs> I have no idea what you mean by that. Is that a name the name of a city? Hyderabad. It's in Telangana. Are you in India, Pixa? You seem to know a lot. Hydrate bad. So we know for sure that it is the Sharminar Gate. No, I Googled it. Okay. <laughs> it's the Eiffel Tower for sure. Telangana. So where is Telangana? This is hard. It'll be hard to find Hyderabad in the middle of India. I can get that easily. I just need to know what part of India to start zooming in on. And then we'll get there. <laughs> exact middle of the country. Middle south. 
The exact middle is right here. It's too much. <laughs> Debatable. Middle, south. I mean, was I kind of in the right place? Belgal Belgalaru? Bogalaru? Down. Quick break. Uh, coding Carter says, I've improved my coding game after the first one I played with you a couple days ago. Thanks for letting me play. It has given me the drive to win. Nice. It is very addicting. <laughs> Once I started playing it, I always wanted to play and win. It's in the middle middle. North of Bengaluru. Okay. Okay. Scroll out. Oh! Hyderabad. We found it. Yeah, and uh, we'll be clashing again on Friday, so be sure to tune in. And thank you, Murdoch, for that hydrate. I think I redeemed it. Hell Hyderabad. Hyderabad? Hydrate bot. All right, what was this thing called again? Something about a gate? Sharmanar Gate. Oh, you're in Bengaluru. Cool. That's just, just south of here. Charmander Gate. Oh, it's actually very south, but cool. Okay. Sharmanar Gate. Found it. I didn't need anybody's help. <laughs> All right, we got to find, uh, I, uh, you all helped very, very much. I appreciate you <laughs> Uh Farasha Cafe and Bakery is what we need to find. We well, don't know which side of this we're on. Was it on the map? There's Nimra Cafe and Bakery. Pearls. Shadan Pearls. Ice cream parlor. <laughs> it's either that. Look for the ATM. All right, let's see what ATM we're by. North side on the map. There is no ice cream here. <laughs> it's the same cafe and bakery. Uh, Nimra. Nimra was right next to the Frosh Cafe. Oh, there it is! Look at it! <laughs> and so, um, Charminar is to our right when Frosh Cafe and Bakery is there. Get it within one meter. Okay. So that's there. That's there. Within one inch. <laughs> the bakery's... I found the bakery. There it is. Farasha. But... The building... One centimeter. All right. The building is... Not quite lining up with what I'm seeing here. <laughs> Next we'll do Mongolia. I appreciate the dedication. Thank you. And hello, Fractal Hash. Uh, we're playing a game called GeoGuessr. So we were dropped onto the map with this street view, or this uh, 360 view. I'm definitely on the street. Okay. Well, um, am I, though? I think I am, yeah, because there's the sidewalk. So we see this picture. And now we had to figure out where we are. We figured out that we're at Charminar Gate, which is in India. I sent that message like 15 hours ago. There was an ATM labeled? Where? Where do you see the ATM? Go by the orientation of the building. You're basically in line with two of the corners.
Dang it. <laughs> this is how you win Fractal Hash. So you have to click on the map to say where you think you are um, based on that. <laughs> the, the map was off. Look, here's, here's the Farage Cafe and Bakery. And we were, like, looking at the corner. We, if anything, we were, like, right here. And... <laughs> How yeah, the map was wrong. The map was very wrong. Oh well, we were only 34, 34 meters away. <laughs> Rigged. Uh, yeah, but thanks for that follow, Fractal Hash. We usually do coding around here, but um is this stream is slowly devolving into a well not devolving. I don't know, into a variety stream. I don't know. Yeah, we lost one point. <laughs> we did really good though. Um the map is wrong. So uh this one we were Presented with a picture of the sea. <laughs> there was no no distinguishing landmarks. Evolving. Evolving. Okay. Uh, this one, we picked the wrong monument. So we were way, way off. This is called taking a break. Uh, can I redeem code review? But instead of a code review, you help me set up GitHub actions for my GitHub repo. Yeah, I'm down for that. That sounds like fun. Coding with sidetracks. <laughs> cool. So that was fun. Thanks, everyone, for participating. Um, I'm going to go. <laughs> Actually, we'll do, we'll do, okay, because this is a coding stream, we're going to do one uh, coding game. One coding game before I go. Here we go. Coding game is fun. Um, it's basically like competitive programming. Three different modes. Complete the code fa the fastest. String length 34 meters is less than string length of 34 centimeters. Exactly. So I got it within 34 centimeters. <laughs> I'll pass on this one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Change my stream category. I'll do that. Um... And then reverse, yeah, so fastest, who's the fastest to complete it? Shortest, who can complete it in the shortest number of characters? Uh, Larry hates shortest. <laughs> yeah, he's really good at it, though. Uh, and then reverse is you're presented with the inputs and the outputs, and you have to figure out what code to write. Coding game! Cool. Uh, so here's that, and while you all are clicking that link and signing up and such, I'm going to change my stream category. Oh, um, I guess I'll just do that here. <laughs> Uh, science and technology. There we go. We're back where we, where we, where we belong. <laughs> uh, I am not verified, no. Um, I applied for a partner a while back, but I didn't get it. And they said I just got a science and technology and geography. I thought I thought I thought I read cartography for a second. <laughs> um, yeah. I got $20 on Alka if he's playing. I didn't get it, no. Um, they said they want to watch my channel growth over the next three to four weeks. Um, and then I can reapply. But yeah, I didn't get it, sadly. <laughs> I think I have a command for that. No, I, so I, if literally on my, um, <laughs> you're not thank you alka thank you alka but but on my uh on my dashboard it says i can reapply it, it tells me the date when i can reapply yeah alka if you win i'll sub to your channel again <laughs> uh alka streams so definitely check out alka's alka's channel shout out alka it's actually really easy to do because his name is so easy to spell. Shout out Alka. Nice. <laughs> um, well, I'm really exhausted. You got this, though, Alka. Reverse mode. Yes. Okay. So uh, you have 15 minutes to complete this, but you are given the inputs and the outputs, outputs and you must determine what is happening. not right okay reverse mode yeah and don't don't tell me in the chat <laughs> we have to figure out what it is it could actually be really easy to figure out i think it has something to do with powers the she boss sees it i don't see it <laughs> um 
or oh, Coder and Black got it. Ah. Uh... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, that's twelve times ten. Yeah, somebody already finished. <laughs> I mean, this looks like add them two together, you get two, and then raise it to the power of two to get four. Um, add these together, you get six. But if I raise that to the power of three, I don't get twenty-seven. Six to the power of three. Uh, you can choose any language. So. Um, I use it, I do JavaScript, but there are a lot of languages listed here. But um, the the challenge we already entered the challenge, so uh, no one else can enter. Twenty seven. Oh, wait, e Erez got it in Python. <laughs> okay. One one. No, I'm not seeing it. I'm really not seeing it. Five two two one one. Two. <laughs> what does secret do? It doesn't do anything, but commands don't show in my overlay. So if people want to talk without it showing up, they do that. Is it related to factorials? What if I something them, then multiply them? I don't get how we could go from 222 to 27, though. Add them, multiply them? 2, 3, 4 times 2. Oh, no. Add, yeah, add, add, <laughs> add them, and then multiply them? Alka got it, too. Uh, why don't I have lower quality in my stream? Um, because I am not a partner. So that's one of the benefits of if I do get a part get a partnership, is my stream uh, gets more priority, so people can actually choose the quality, which is unfortunate right now that you're forced, especially if you're on lower bandwidth, you're forced to watch at a higher bit rate. The operation starts with a. You mean add? <laughs> but two for like so I'm ignoring the first line. I am ignoring the first line. Because that's the number of elements. And then if we add them, concatenate them. Yeah, so the first line is always like the size or the number of inputs. Um, I misclick submit. So easy. Ah! Oh, oh that's unfor unfortunate, Pixa. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60 times 2 is 120. 5 times 2 is 10 times 2 is 20. What if you add 1 to all the numbers and then stare at them for a bit? <laughs> n plus 1 plus x plus 1 times, oh, n plus 1 Add one to every item and multiply them together. Math face. <laughs> what's what's three times three times three? What's three times two times two? Okay, okay. I would have ne I would have literally never figured that out. But look, but look how easy this is. <laughs> this is literally just. <sighs> oh. I mean, Gazija gave me the answer. All right, see you later, Larry. <laughs> um, have a good run. And can we get another shout out for Larry, please? Um, okay, result plus equals, no, no, multi multiply equals x plus one. And then we just lock the result. <laughs> I would have never seen, like the thing is, I never see patterns. I never do. Okay, we got zero, we expected four. Oh, start this off at. Yeah, I would like I literally would have spent 15 minutes just staring at it. I don't see patterns like that. Like add one to each value and then multiply them all together. Pattern blind. Yeah. 
And the thing is, if you ever take an IQ test, it's like based off of patterns. I'm pretty sure that I am like below average intelligence. <laughs> um, I don't know. I noticed the patterns in some things, in some things, not all things. <clears throat> Okay, let's see how Coder and Black did it. They finished it in 51 seconds. Beautiful. Output times equals x plus 1. Uh, Erez did it in Python. Answer e times equals x plus 1. CJ is superior. I'm so smart, I'm dumb. Um, great work. <clears throat> Alka, T times equals x. Ah, but you did the plus 1 on the line before it. Very good. <laughs> Larry did it in Python. Same thing. Times equals x plus 1. I mean, once you figure it out, it's not that hard. And coding with Carter. Uh, I did it in Java. Coding Carter. <clears throat> Number plus one times equals the result. Beautiful. Big brain. <laughs> Let's highlight that message. Big brain. <laughs> uh, uh, Ember did it in Java as well. Grab the number, multiply, uh, add one, and multiply it on the result. Krish cool. Same thing. Yeah, there's really not any other way you could have done this unless you tried to like minify it or something like that. Shaggy. Great work. Adding one. It, you, you followed uh, what Alka did very similarly. Add one before you multiply it. Uh, Pixa. Put the wrong number in. <laughs> I'm ashamed of my... That's happened to me before. I accidentally... Uh, this is not code golf. No, it's... Um, this was just the first one to complete it. Now let's golf it. <laughs> That's actually the default in Node, and I didn't realize that until someone asked the question in our Discord, and Alka pointed us to the Node.js docs. Because um, readline is actually built into Node.js. Look at it. It's a core module. Um, and this is literally how you can read input from standard in. So you can like ask a question and get back an answer. Did I make that face today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, I have to go. They stole it from C Sharp. Nice. Uh, I have to go. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me. Um, this devolved from a code kata stream, but it was pretty fun. We still did some katas. We definitely did some katas. We definitely did at least one kata today. <laughs> hearts, hearts, hearts all around. Um, uh, copy the raid messages here. I actually need to get Clippy Raid going. So Clippy Raid is something that uh, InstaFluff made, which is like an overlay where you can copy and paste the raid message. But for now, we have this website. If you go there, if you're not a sub, you can copy this line. If you are a sub, copy this line. And wherever we go, we're going to share the coding garden love. Um, and um, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> All right, stick around. Um, and join us in this raid. Oh, I need, this always happens. I need to use stream puppy. So <laughs> InstaFluff made stream puppy. I need to use, I was talking about this earlier. I need to actually use it so I can like click the buttons on my phone because right now I'm literally sharing my mouse with my other computer. So I got to run over there. I don't know. I don't know. We are abandoned. <laughs> no, I'm still here. <laughs> Rage Dragger. Yeah, I'll, I'll see who's live. We'll see. We'll see. Just stick around. I'll decide. I'll decide who we raid. <laughs> awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for all the follows. Thanks for uh, the Twitch Prime subs. Uh, Technomech and Neon and Wally Oxen. Uh, very much appreciated. And thank you, What's Up Baby, for that follow. Um, you're great. I appreciate you all. Tune in Friday morning. I'll probably be late, but roughly around 7.30 a.m. GMT minus 6. Uh, we're going to play coding game. So it's going to be two hours of just us playing this coding game, which will be pretty fun. Um, yes, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time.
Here's this. 